Okay, welcome back. We're in Matthew chapter 19, just beginning to get into the edge of this very vital and significant passage of scripture, the story of Jesus' encounter with the rich young ruler and how that may apply to me and to you. We just read Matthew 19, verse number 17. Jesus, why, uh, why are you asking me about what is good? There is only one who is good. So he's telling the man, you're a sinner, you're not good. So that implies you need a savior, right? Right, okay. But if you wish to enter into life, now what did the man ask for? What good thing shall I do that I may obtain eternal life? So fundamentally, he's asking, if we strip it down, I want eternal life. And I would like assurance of eternal life. How do I get it? You know, now he implied there was some good thing he had to do. But underneath that is, I just want eternal life, okay? And Jesus, I believe you have the answer. You're obviously somebody who's, at least he believes you're from God. I don't know if he believed he was God or the Son of God or the Messiah, but he's worth kneeling down and posing this question before. And so when Jesus says, if you wish to enter into life, that's another way of saying, if you want to obtain eternal life. Enter into life and obtain eternal life are one and the same thing. And uh, Jesus then finishes up by saying, if you, if you wish to enter into life, keep the commandments. Whoa. What about uh, Luke? What about Mark? As they tell us their rendition of the story. Well, Mark says uh, he, to, to the man, that Jesus says to the man, you know the commandments. You know the commandments. And uh, Luke, the exact same thing. You know the commandments. And uh, let's stop and think about that. Now, I I'm not about for one second to contradict the Lord Jesus Christ and saying, well, Jesus, you gave the wrong answer to this man who asked you what you must do to obtain eternal life. He gave the right answer. If you want to enter life, obtain eternal life, keep the commandments. And, the, and Jesus is about to list five or six commandments that or of paramount importance if one wants to inherit eternal life. Now, if Jesus was telling the man the truth, uh, we have one of two options at that point. I'm going to say, well, it was true then, but it's not true now. In other words, we're saying Jesus required something of people then during the time of the rich young ruler that he does not require of people today. That could be one conclusion you could make. In fact, you could go even deeper and you say, because today we're saved by grace through faith. And, and, and in the same sentence, you're saying, but back then it was by works. That's tantamount. I mean, that's, that's the equivalent of what you're saying if you adopt that interpretation that it was applicable to, to that man and those people at that time, but it's not applicable to us. And people do say that. And they have motivation to say that because they say, whoa, that sounds like works. We're saved by grace through faith. I've already pointed out to you, however, that there is an element of grace already spoken to this man. Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. So you're a sinner. If you're gonna have eternal life, you're gonna need some mercy. But that being said, Jesus did say, keep the commandments. Now, I'm going to uh, go against what so many believe, that this was only applicable back before Jesus died and not applicable after he died, that there's a different means of salvation. And I'm going to say that based upon my understanding of the entire New Testament. Uh, Paul, you know, I mean, he's a pretty much an authority, right? Paul writes in Romans that salvation has always been received by faith and through grace. And he cites uh, examples of Abraham, who long before the law of Moses was ever given, we read in the Bible that Abraham believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, indicating that his own righteousness wasn't enough. <laughs> he needed some other means of getting righteousness, and it came by faith, and obviously grace was a component of that, <laughs> because his righteousness wasn't good enough, he had to get it by another method. People were saved by grace through faith even before the law of Moses was given. Of course, they always had the law of conscience, right? God put that in everyone's heart. And then Paul also argues that uh, after the law, people were saved by grace through faith. He cites David in one of David's writings in the Psalms, you know, how blessed is the man whose sin thou dost not take into account, whose sin thou hast pardoned, and so forth. There's the element of grace. And uh, Paul 
argues salvation was by faith then. And so any of his detractors to whom he's addressing in the book of Romans, he's got Old Testament evidence that they're wrong. The law can't save anybody. It's impossible to be saved by works. We have to be saved by grace through faith. And, And so is Jesus contradicting Paul when he tells this man to keep the commandments? Is there a different way of salvation under the old covenant and before the old covenant than there is now? Was obedience necessary then for salvation, but it's optional now? No, no, no. Why? Because the New Testament doesn't teach any of those things. The New Testament certainly teaches that we're saved by grace through faith, but it also teaches that faith without works is dead, useless, and cannot save. And we don't nullify the law by faith, says Paul in Romans, but we establish the law. That is, people who believe in God, who believe in Jesus, and who believe anything that Jesus says, you know, essentially, it's going to show up on their life by a lifestyle of obedience. And so as James wrote and said, show me your faith without your works, which is an impossibility, he said, I'll show you my faith by my works. People who believe obey. People who obey are the believers, okay? And so those are synonymous terms. One includes the other. Uh, Faith and works are not two things that are diametrically opposed to each other. They are two things that include each other. Believers obey. The obedient ones are the believers. That's why they obey. You got it? You got it. And so Jesus is not presenting an alternative, temporary means of salvation to this man that has no application to us whatsoever. Absolutely not. You you know, if you and I are going to obtain eternal life, we too are going to have to have obedience. That is the evidence of our faith, which saves us by the grace of God. All right? More to say on this important topic. So I will see you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.